Hello everyone, this is Corey Mitchell with your Swing Trading Stock Market Outlook for the week of March 4th. If you're watching this video and you ever want to find this article, if you go to tradethatswing.com, it is under the stock section. If you go to stock market analysis and trades, this article is updated each week. And then if you want to see the historical breakdown, it is all provided way at the bottom. So that's why it's updated each week. It saves me a little bit of time. So heading into the week of March 4th, overall market conditions still pretty good and I'm willing to deploy capital on long swing trades. These are the list that I consider trades within. So this weekly outlook is basically just an overview of how general conditions are and that tells me whether I want to be deploying capital aggressively or more conservatively or not at all. And then the actual trade setups in individual stocks are what trigger me in and actually start deploying my capital. So the best swing trading stocks list for March includes very high momentum stocks. And if you have limited time for monitoring trades, I suggest checking out this article. Just gives a great breakdown of one of the strategies I use and it can be implemented in not a lot of time because it's a short watch list and we're watching for very specific things and pretty easy to go through that list and just see if a trade setup occurred a little bit more uh, automated type strategy so a total breakdown of how you can implement that strategy in that video uh, the current stocks watch list is a little bit different it's more you can call it pattern based so it looks at uh, earnings trades, also looks at some of the stocks that could potentially set up based on this uh, best swing trading stocks list. And it also looks at chart patterns, so uh, contraction patterns, rounded bottoms, those types of things. Uh, the chart patterns I haven't been adding in lately because I just haven't had time to scan for them. I've been mostly focusing on the earnings plays and the tater trades, lots of explosive stocks lately. Uh, as we'll see once we get down Oh, let's head there now. We've just been in such a strong uptrend on all these indices that we, at least I haven't, well, I haven't been scanning for them, but I haven't seen as many uh, contraction patterns and stuff because things just are, the stocks that are really strong are just running and that's going to favor the tater strategy type trades or the earnings play type trades that just require a little bit of a pullback and then keep running and that's what those strategies are meant to capture. And so let's take a look at those. We have the NASDAQ 100 strong uptrend move to new highs. NYSE composite in an overall uptrend, you know, overall higher highs, higher swing lows. S&P, same thing. The Russell 2000, which is smaller cap stocks, had a bit more of a deeper pullback, kind of a rounded bottom here, but moving up to the upside recently so short term uptrend within a longer term uptrend after a deeper pullback and we're moving back to the high so pretty much everything moving aggressively the canadian index same thing was pretty choppy here all year and is now breaking out bitcoin uh moving toward its all-time high just you know a few grand away from that sixty-nine thousand. it vary a little bit depending on the exchange and but sixty-nine thousand area pretty close to the all-time high or the all-time high and we're getting close. I think we're up to about 64,000 at the highest point, hanging out around 63,000 right now. We did have a 21% pullback based on studying every Bitcoin bull market. Uh, following a 20% plus pullback within a bull market, the median rally that follows is about 75%. We're at I think about 66% from this little low here up to where we are now or the high that we hit uh, recently. And as I said, pretty close to that all-time high. So in that area where we could potentially see a little bit of a pullback, a 20% pullback is almost nothing in the S&P, or in Bitcoin, I consider those just kind of normal fluctuations, but we don't know when one of those is going to turn into a bigger decline. If you are interested in those, do I have it in here? Yeah, so I have this article here where you can go in and it basically breaks down every bull market that we've had in the last decade, how big the pullbacks were, what the ultimate uh, rallies were, 
so you just get a sense of like how the price action unfolds and it's not predictive it's just simply uh yeah to give you an idea of how it unfolds maybe based some strategies on it but it is not necessarily predictive in the sense that you know i always expect a 75 percent increase or 21 percent decline or the average is 27 that sort of thing it's just uh to give you a sense either way um where are we now and what was the other one we were looking at gold a lot of chatter on this one it, it is a big pattern this is a two-week chart so we're looking at going back to 2020 we had this peak and then we've just been chopping around in here big rounded bottom pattern and so now we've been in here multiple years so a lot of chatter about gold breaking out to new highs the one thing we want to be aware of is that the gold miners are still in the toilet i have not seen very many gold stocks popping up on my strong scans list and if this does break out and run there'll be plenty of opportunities and you just notice in my kind of write up on gold here, there's a lot of ifs. So if gold does break out of this multi-year pattern, there would be plenty of opportunities to get in and time to benefit if the stocks eventually go as well uh, and if they start showing up on my scan list. So I'm trading the stocks. That's my focus. The stocks usually have much bigger moves than gold itself. I'm not really interested in trading gold itself. I prefer the gold stocks because you can have much bigger moves. Uh, in a short period of time, gold might only move 5% or 10% while the stocks will move 50 or 60%. So I prefer trading the gold stocks, and but I'll only trade them if they show up on my scan list. They got to start showing up in these lists here in order for me to trade them so gold really not of interest to me if, if it starts breaking out yeah that's kind of interesting uh you know if it breaks out of this pattern it's interesting but until these stocks actually start moving up it's really of no interest and if gold does go on a long bull run then likely the stocks may start following and at that point i'll trade it but i myself i'm not trading gold itself so it's a non-issue to me at the moment until I start seeing those stocks move let's look at the S&P 500 and the indicators so these give a sense of overall market health the turquoise one is all US stocks the red line is S&P 500 stocks and it's whether how many the percentage of those stocks that are above their 50-day moving average just a very crude measure of an uptrend and you can see it works pretty good when it's above 50 we have these uptrending periods when it's below 50 we tend to get f very flat or declining uh, conditions in most stocks and it makes sense it's just saying like yeah most stocks are either above or below their 50 they most stocks are in uptrends or downtrends and we were kind of riding this 50 percent area while the s p moved up but we didn't really have any major signals to get out of our positions or to not take positions so i i emphasize in these things each week like i'm not trying to predict the future i am just trading based on what the conditions are right now and right now they're good so i'm going to continue to take long positions i do not want to make it more complicated than it is where my indicator says okay we're in we're above 50 which is what i'm looking for and then I start adding in an extra layer where it's like, oh, well, where are we going to be in one week? Where are we going to be in two weeks? That, you know, it adds in an extra element and you're just going to mess yourself up, in my opinion, because now you're just layering in all these things. And like the more variables you add in, the least accurate you're likely to be, actually. So, you know, if conditions are good, you've we've been riding, you know, basically just been hammering the longs this entire way up because... The indicators have been good, every one. So this one, volume not important to me at the moment. This one is the daily percentage movement of the S&P 500. And uptrends are characterized by lower volatility. You can see a little bit of the end of 2022, which was a bear market. And you see these big single day drops of bigger than 2%, more indicative of downtrending behavior or very choppy conditions, which are tough to trade in. And then as we start rising, 
we just don't get those big declines. That is, again, is not predictive that one won't come up. But if one comes up, that is a signal to then step aside. But until that occurs, we continue to go on the long side, assuming everything else is good. And so, yeah, we're still in this, you know, just lower volatility, uptrending environment, and this helps showcase that. This is the NYSE advanced decline line. I've zoomed in on it a bit here so you can't see the history, but at least, and we don't need to see it in the near term, it is rising along with the S&P. So it's basically confirming what the S&P is doing. That's what we want to see. And this is up volume divided by total volume. I put a just a frowny face on it because, or not a frowny face, just a neutral face because it's not telling us anything. We haven't had any really big upside volume days or really big downside volume days in the last couple weeks so uh, nothing to report there this one i put a little like inquisitive face on because it was um we were moving lower while the s p 500 was moving up so i just noted that but like i said we didn't we haven't we didn't crash through the 50 level or anything like that so it's been all good and yeah, some of the best market conditions we've seen since 2020. And that's why it's good to keep it simple, because based on this, we continue to trade until conditions deteriorate. And the nice thing is that since, with at least with my strategies, we're always waiting for a move up. You know, we get the pullback, prices have to start moving up. When we eventually get the pullback in the S&P 500, we usually don't have, unless we just took a bunch the day before or something like that, almost always we're starting to like, things are hitting targets and hitting trailing stop losses. So we sort of naturally are decreasing uh, our capital exposure. And then if the indexes start dropping, we're not getting triggered into new trades because generally most of the stocks follow the indices. And if the S&P 500 starts dropping, we don't get those pushes higher in stocks to get us back in to trade so we're riding long we we have our trailing stop losses out or our profit targets out as prices keep rising those yes we might add some new positions so those get thinned off and then if we get a drop we're not adding new positions we hit our stop losses our trailing stop losses and then we're out until conditions improve so that's why i go through this whole process just to help you understand the reasoning Sectors on the move, technology, consumer cyclicals, industrials, healthcare, financial, these have been the top ones pretty much all along. Uh, communication services, ones in there, you can see it's been dropping down. The weakest one last week, moving toward the bottom of the list over the last month. Uh, technology, consumer cyclicals, these are ones hanging out near the top of the list on all of them. You see financials hanging out near the upper half, a little bit weaker last week. Healthcare also a little bit weaker last week, but hanging out overall. We have seen basic materials and real estate move up in the short term. Uh, you know, decent weeks, basic materials kind of getting toward the middle of the pack over the last month. But I haven't added them in yet just because they haven't really made uh, much of a move yet. So these still kind of looking at the, the strongest ones, especially technology and consumer cyclicals. So what am I doing right now? I'm still deploying capital on long trades, looking at the earnings plays, tater setups. Uh, those have been my main focus lately, as I mentioned, just because prices are running fairly aggressively. And then, of course, there's the always the option to add in day trading as well, if you so wish, as well as passive investing to just make some money in the background while the S&P is doing extremely well. And so that's your stock market outlook for the week of March 4th. Happy trading out there.